Hello, everyone. This is Bill Stearns, NE4RD, from Linux in the Hamshack podcast. I got a uh, request from uh, Sterling, N0SSC, that he wants to see a quick tutorial on using WSJTX or FT8. I'm in the middle of doing some contacts here right now on 20 meters. And uh, just worked a listener, WA0EIR. Thanks a lot for working me, and we'll definitely see you in January when we... Uh, we bring the podcast back live again. So this is the new version of WSJTX, version 1.8.0-RC3. And uh, I'm operating on my little crummy 20-meter uh, antenna up on the roof. And doing some uh, contacts here for, uh, for some fun. I'm, I'm supposed to be working, but... Uh, <laughs> We know how that goes, you know, you got the ham radio right next to you, so you want to play with it. So WSJTX is a great little program to do uh, the JT modes. Uh, now we have FT8, which is extremely popular, as you can see here in the, uh, in the waterfall. The waterfall gives you a, a glimpse of every bit of traffic that's going on out there right now. And this is this right here. Up in the top, you can see my transmit and receive frequency is set at one spot. With the new version, they have an ability to hold your TX frequency, so you can answer people all over the uh, all over the band pass. And uh, basically, I choose a, a nice empty spot where I don't see any more, any traces going on, and that allows me to have a nice clear uh, operating frequency. Although there could still be stations on top of me, I don't know. Uh, I can tell by looking at the band activity decode so I can see if somebody's answering back on the same frequency I'm on. But uh, what's nice is once you started CQing and you have your auto sequence and call first set up, um, it allows you to start sending CQ and then everything else is fairly automated after that once somebody answers like K9VER answered back from EN54 my station automatically sent him back a report of negative 12. And then he sent me a report of negative uh, 10. So the R means Roger. And then I'll send him back a Roger, Roger, Roger. Basically meaning that I have uh, received his signal report and the contact is good at that point. Once he sends 73, my uh, program automatically sends him 73, turns off the transmit after this uh after this cycle and then allows me to log it into my logger and i'm using wsj or sorry a cqr log to do my logging i'm just going to hit enable tx again to do another cycle uh the program's easy to set up i've already uh, done a video once about uh, setting wsjtx up in uh in linux so this is uh running ubuntu budgie uh, I have this tied to uh, CQR log, which is hiding right here in the background. I have it running in remote mode for WSJTX, so all my logging goes in there. And if we uh, show my QSO list, which is popping up on the other screen, uh, we can see that the logging is going in right as I work them. And uh, you can see I've done a few contacts today. And uh, yeah, there's really there's really not much to it. This is probably why a lot of people uh, <laughs> a lot of people uh, don't like uh, FT8 because it's more of a, a quote unquote beaconing mode. But uh, it's a great way to make contacts uh, if you're working on collecting worked all states. This is a, a definitely a great way if you're uh, just working on that uh, particular aspect of the hobby. Uh, I do have all states on uh, JT65, and uh, probably will have it on FT8 here shortly. I, I I haven't kept track myself, so we'll see where that goes. But uh, basically, as long as your monitor's on, you're going to definitely see all the decodes, and every uh, timing sequence, you're going to see stations, where they're at. So this tells you they're offset here. So like 471 is going to be over here on your waterfall. We can see that this guy's talking to me at 451, which is right here in the waterfall. So it's pretty simple to understand where you're at. 
Um, with this new version, with the whole TX frequency, it's a little bit different. You used to be able to click, and uh, if you had the lock TX RX, the frequencies would stay the same, and you would kind of slide over as the conversation drifted. But uh, with this new version, uh, the uh, TX and RX will kind of slide around, or at least the TX will hold if you have the TX held. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really fun mode. It's a great way to make a lot of contacts. And uh, as you can see, if it doesn't get the next response, like here with the uh, KC8 DMH, I'm not getting uh, I'm not getting a 73 from them. So I'm I'm still sending Roger Roger Roger. So to make sure that we complete this QSO, now I got the 73. It'll automatically prompt me to log in my logger, which has the start and stop times, as well as the band and everything else, the grid. And I have my TX power set at 25 watts right now on my uh, FT450D. So as soon as you log the contact, you can just enable TX again. As long as your waterfall is clear where your transmit is, I always check to make sure that I'm not going to be stomping on somebody. So yeah, if you, if you haven't gotten into the digital modes, this is a great one to get into because it's really a, a low barrier of entry into uh, digital modes, and it's it's rather quick. You can get a QSO done in, in a basically about a minute and a half once all the cycling goes through. It reminds me very much of uh, a very slow form of CW uh, because uh, CW obviously just sent 599 uh, and uh, you know your state or something like that, depending upon uh, the contact you're trying to make. It's definitely not a QSO mode where you're having a conversation, although you can customize your message here. This is a customizable last message, and this is what uh, what WA0EIR sent to me. He says, see you in January, LH. So it allows you to just send some custom text if you feel that you need to. But uh, let's just go through the configurations just uh, so you know what it looks like and what my settings are here. So my settings here uh, have my call sign, my grid square. And uh, basically the display settings are set up to kind of show me, you know, the, the, the decodes in a time sequence. I have a blank line between decoding periods so it doesn't all run together. Uh, the distance in miles and the TX messages to the RX frequency window. So like this is the RX frequency window. So my conversation is going to appear here. Uh, as well as my TX stuff. So you can see these are all my transmissions are marked with TX. And uh, the receptions are all come in red because they have my call sign in it. And we can see up here that this didn't get getting to get uh, marked with red because it didn't have my call sign in it. So it automatically marks the conversation when your call sign is heard. Now Windows, uh, you can do this in Windows as well and Mac, uh, Mac OS. And there are some other programs like uh, uh, W or JT Alert X and JT Alert that give you some more functionality of uh, stuff that's in your log, stuff that's not in your log, stuff you need. You can set uh, all kinds of audio warnings and stuff like that. I have uh, basically in my in my uh, CQR log, it has a monitor built in that basically tells me stuff that I've worked and haven't worked. So it'll it'll do like matching on call signs and on grid squares to see that I've confirmed it or not. Um, obviously these are all US stations, so I've confirmed the country. I don't need to worry about getting the country. But uh, as you can see, it's, it's pretty quick and easy. I mean, just during this video, I've, I've done quite a few uh, QSOs and it doesn't take very long at all. It probably takes me more time to explain how the program works. So uh, yeah, if you're not on WSJTX, and you want to get into digital modes you need you know need just a uh, a device to convert your audio sound card into your rig some people have used their sound cards without any problems i'm using a tigertronic signal link to uh, interface my rig with the audio channel it gives it a nice clean audio path to operate in uh, the only thing i have to worry about with my ft 450d is the alc i want to make sure i have no alc uh no ALC while I'm transmitting, and of course I hit the uh, <laughs> hit the dial while I was doing that. Um, so yeah, so I flip around through my meters and I make sure that the ALC is set at flat. You know, no 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 indication at all of ALC. Then I flip over to power and I make sure that I'm putting out my 25 watts 
and then I adjust accordingly. I have a dial on the front of my Tigertronics that allows me to adjust the amount of TX signal that I have coming out. In addition, you can adjust this little slider here, the power slider. This will allow you to do fine, uh, fine tuning to that if you wanted to control it through here rather than the dial. And that gives you the availability to do that. Uh, there's really not much else to it. You know, your rig settings will be different depending upon which rig you're plugged into. You know, you might have automatic ALC adjustment. I know some Kenwoods do that. Um, and, uh, you know, the newer rigs transport audio on their uh, CAT interface through USB. So a lot of people don't even have to buy a, a secondary device to actually operate this mode. So if you have like a newer rig that has one of those, like, a, you know, TS590 or a, uh, you know, an ICOM 7300 or something like that, that has the audio path directly into the rig through USB, you can get on the air pretty much today. You don't need to wait. And if you uh, don't have a logger, you can also just log directly to WSJTX. It'll create its own little ADIF file, and you can use that for logging. And then you can import that later when you have a logger, whether you use like, a, oh, anything like HRD, DX Labs, ROM Log, or any of the other loggers that are out there for amateur radio purposes. So anyway, this is Bill Stearns, NE4RD with Linux and the Hamshack podcast. I just wanted to kind of show a little bit of a uh, little bit of FT8 operation here, and we'll talk to you later. Seventy-three.